Remember to subscribe for daily top reddit stories. Ok story time. What is the scariest story you know that is 100% true? Was working the evening shift at a gas station. Man comes in all disoriented. I go to help him out. He has a gash on his head and doesn't know where he was. I couldn't see any crashes around so assumed he had fallen or something. Normally we are supposed to stay inside the glass shielded register area whenever anyone is in the store. I, being a nice human being, went to help while calling the police M's. They got there and checked him out. They thought his head may have been fractured. Took him to the air. I went back to work. Cops stopped back by for some coffee a few hours later. They told me the guy got hit by a baseball bat trying to break into a little girl's bedroom and was wanted for rape and murder in two other states. I never left the register area at night again. The Lake Nyas disaster. The lake periodically belches a cloud of invisible carbon dioxide gas that suffocates everything within a 16 mile radius. In 1986, over 1700 people and all their livestock died without even understanding what was happening to them. The story of Mary Vincent always stands out to me. In 1978, 15 year old Mary was hitchhiking. A man named Lawrence Singleton picked her up. He brutally raped her and eventually made her get out of the car. She planned to run, but he noticed and cut both her arms off. He threw her into a ditch ravine and left her to die. She packed her stumps with mud to stop the bleeding and spent all night crawling out. She eventually makes it to the highway and starts walking. Naked and covered in blood, the first car that saw her sped away in fear. The second car was a couple on their honeymoon. They picked her up and she survived. Edited to add, I was in a rush when I wrote this. So you should definitely read more into the story. It's crazy. From the horrific act itself, to the court proceedings, to the fact that he hardly served any time. John List killed his whole family wife, mother, daughter and two sons. He meticulously planned the whole thing cancelling all delivery services, excusing the kids from school, and even turned the air conditioning as low as possible to preserve the bodies for as long as possible. After he killed them all, he placed the bodies in sleeping bags and lined them up. He then wrote a letter to his pastor explaining why he had to kill them. He then leaves and isn't heard from again. 18 years later he's remarried and doing the same job as before but this time he doesn't have any children. He's finally arrested after a tip was given to the FBI. Crazy thing is that because he planned it so well. The bodies weren't discovered until a month after the murders so he had a huge head start and essentially started a new life in the same career and was heavily involved in a new church down in Virginia. Took 18 years to capture him. One of my friends had someone following her home, hiding in the bushes so they couldn't be seen. She booked it to her house, got inside, and he was watching the house from the outside. She called the cops. They come along quietly and got the jump on him. He had condoms, handcuffs, and a knife. When they got his DNA, it turned out that he was linked to a half dozen grapes in the area. She credits her regimen of running sprints to outrunning him that night and firmly believes she would have been graped if she couldn't outrun him then. In my town in the early 90s there was a notorious killer that had all of BC, Canada on watch. My wife's mother years and years before I knew them had been home alone while her husband was in England doing tree surgeon work. Arborist. She was in her laundry room when a man walked up from her basement, completely scaring her. She freaked out and said what the hell are you doing here? He said he was friends with her husband and was just coming to see if he was here. Apparently he told him he could just walk in, which she knew was bullshit. She was smart enough to tell him that he was just at the store and would be back any minute. He said he would wait outside for him. As soon as he left she called the police. But he was long gone by the time they got here. Two weeks later, the killer was caught. His mugshot put on TV and it was the guy in her house. Edit. The guy's name was Terry Driver. An acquaintance of mine sent his son to triathlon camp in Texas. A week later, his son came back from camp. The next day, the son was complaining of a headache. Four days later, he was dead. Healthy. Happy. Fit 12 year old one week. Dead the next. Turns out the lake had Negleria Fowlery, the brain eating amoeba. Nothing scares me as irrationally as already being dead and waiting for your body to catch on. 
three sailors survived the sinking of the USS West Virginia at Pearl Harbor, only to die 16 days later. Due to the lack of air, the Navy knew they were there, but couldn't get to them. 16 days to die. My dad and some friends got drunk and went for a drive on some back roads and were going as fast as the truck would go as teenagers. My dad was slightly less drunk than the others and eventually demanded they let him get out. They pulled over and he and one other girl got out. He and the girl started walking to town while the other three sped off in the opposite direction. Well less than a mile up the road from where they got out is an extremely sharp turn. Which they missed and hit a tree going pretty close to triple digits. Miles per hour. Two of them died on impact and the only reason the third survived is because they crashed in front of a house that two doctors lived in. The survivor was paralyzed and lost his leg and part of his arm and was in the hospital for 8 months before dying. This was in the 60s so medical care wasn't what it is today. When I first got my permit my dad took me to that corner to explain the importance of safe driving. It gave me goosebumps about how close he was to being in the truck. He said that the dad of the driver got what remained of the truck to be hung up in the center of town for months after to be a warning to all. My brother's ex-girlfriend had two older sisters, they died before she was born. One day they decided to play hide and seek or something. So anyway, they both climbed inside a chest and accidentally locked themselves in. They suffocated. Nutty Putty Cave in Utah was sealed up in 2009 after John Jones was trapped upside down in a small crevice while spelunking. When rescue teams finally arrived he had been upside down for so long that his legs were drained of blood. The only possible way to have gotten him out was to break his legs. Which would have sent him into fatal shock. He died after being trapped for 28 hours. His body is still in the cave. There was a woman who worked in a science lab who spilled two drops of organic mercury on the back of her gloved hand. Those two drops destroyed her entire nervous system and brain. On the 20th of September, 1987 in Bellingham, Washington, a Georgia Pacific paper mill worker was sent to inspect a heat exchanger system in the steam plant. Inside the base of the stack, he spotted a charred skeleton. To this day, no one is certain who the victim was. How they wound up in such a horrible place, nor why. The Toy Box Killer and his transcripts. If you absolutely want to have your day ruined, this has to be one of the most disturbing, creepiest things ever. Serial killer David Parker Ray would play these tapes for his victims. So they had an idea of what was coming and to also mentally break them. Here the start of one tape to give you an idea. Hello there, itch, are you comfortable right now? I doubt it. Wrists and ankles chained. Gagged. Probably blindfolded. You are disoriented and scared. 2. I would imagine. Perfectly normal. Under the circumstances. For a little while. At least. You need to get your sheet together and listen to this tape. It is very relevant to your situation. I'm going to tell you. In detail. Why you have been kidnapped. What's going to happen to you and how long you'll be here. I don't know the details of your capture, because this tape is being created the 23rd of July, 1993 as a general advisory tape for future female captives. Can you imagine how terrifying it would be to wake up in a place you didn't know and have someone play these tapes for you telling you what horrible things were going to happen to you before you died? I remember this poor kid who went missing while I was at Purdue. He was trying to come home to his dorm after a party and either wasn't able to get into the building or perhaps wanted to bypass the check-in desk. Just a guess based on my experience as a student there. Since he had been drinking, he entered the building through a door to an electrical closet that should have been locked and was electrocuted and killed that night. He was last seen the 13th of January and the body was discovered the 19th of March after reports of foul odors at the dorm. Edit. The body was found at Owen Hall. Year 2007. I remember talking with friends about theories of what happened when he went missing. How terrifying it must have been to find out there was a dead body in your dorm for months. Sorry if any current Purdue folks are feeling weirded out. Be safe and stay out of the maintenance closets. Guy goes into a small building and dies. Later, investigator shows up and sees the body, calls 911 and then dies. Paramedics show up to help them, then die. The reason? Oxygen levels at head height were normal. Oxygen levels went bent over was basically zero. Bending over in this room killed four people by asphyxiation. Edit. They could breathe. 
The air they were breathing contained no oxygen. The human body can't tell the difference. Happened to me. Have posted about it before. I was around 11 years old and I woke up in the middle of the night to a man straddled on top of me with his hand over my mouth and nose. He told me to roll over and not scream. I rolled onto the floor and tried to scream bloody murder. I say tried cause when you are truly terrified it can take a second to find your voice. My mom heard me screaming and came in and fought with the guy. He was at least 6 feet she was 5 feet 3 inches and scared him enough with the fighting and screaming that he took off out the window he had come in through. Never did catch him. A high priority inmate who could implicate dozens of wealthy and powerful people apparently committed suicide while on suicide watch at his prison. And the footage can't be found due to a malfunction of the camera. But, the news told me that's how it happened and the news is never wrong. Japanese war crimes in World War 2. That is my real answer. But it does remind me of that movie with Paul Rudd where they're talking about scary stories around the campfire and he says something like. Everyday children like you are kidnapped and sold into child sex trafficking rings. This may just horrify me more than others. Dude was working on a tuna steamer and they closed him in and steamed him. I can't help but imagine that as anything but a truly terrifying and painful way to die. One of the main reasons I never could bring myself to do real factory labor is because I don't trust people enough to not tuna steam me. A guy I worked with was riding his dirt bike through the woods and somebody hung a cable between two trees. My buddy caught his throat on it and saw the dude steal his dirt bike. Woke up in the hospital with a lacerated throat and a broken larynx. Pretty crazy what somebody will do for something so cheap. I worked for U Hall when I was 18 and it was located in front of a club that was known for being really sketchy. I came in to open one morning and it was common for people to knock on the door hoping to get in early and get their truck. On this day, I hear frantic knocking on the door. I'm there alone still so it kind of startled me. I look and there's a woman. Completely naked. Covered in what looks like blood. I called the cops and grabbed one of the moving blankets and went outside to cover her up. She smelled really bad and was a mess. Ended up being blood and her own sheet she was covered in. Found out later she was droogage at the club that night early morning. Great and left blacked out in the alley. It was just a ducked up and surreal situation to be involved in. During World War II, an American airplane crashed near the Japanese island of Chichijima. There were 9 servicemen on board. One was rescued by an American submarine. The other 8 were taken in by the Japanese. Don't want to go into all the details, but through some time and events, the Japanese ended up eating those servicemen. But that's not the weird part. The one serviceman who was rescued, that was George H. W. Bush. Google Chichijim incident for more details if you'd like. A headless, limbless torso was found in the bushes at the rest stop in the town where I grew up. They never found the rest of her body parts or the murderer. She wasn't even identified until about a decade later. She was a prostitute that had been estranged from her family. My mom's theory is that a truck driver from out of state did it. Dismembered her. Dumped her torso at the rest stop. And scattered the rest of her over state lines. Could have been an isolated incident or it could be a serial killer. We might not ever know. Edit. I was in a crappy motel. The room had bedbugs. I was too exhausted to go to the front desk. I just needed to make it until the morning. I slept in the tub. Hours later I hear someone breaking through the window. I had a big knife with me and ran out into the room to find a man halfway through my window. We stared for a while at each other in shock. I think we both were scared. Then he says, is this your room? I'm like, yes, this is my room man. More staring. Then he slowly starts backing out while cursing me for leaving my window unlocked and not expecting him to break in. Motel on what have. Sacramento. On the 31st of May, 2014, two 12 year old girls lured their friend into the woods and brutally stabbed her in an attempt to summon or appease Slenderman, a fictional internet villain who is said to inhabit wooded areas and stalk his victims among the trees. A pub in Colnbrook, Berkshire in UK has a pretty terrifying history. The ostrich has seen its fair share of murders and they say that over 60 were committed here. Most famous of all were those committed in the 17th century by the landlord of the time. German. 
who with his wife made a very profitable sideline by murdering their guests after they had retired for the night. They had a trap door built into the floor of one of their bedrooms and when a suitably rich candidate arrived Jarman would inform his wife that a fat pig was available if she wanted one. She would reply by asking her husband to put him in the sty for till the morrow. The bedstead was hinged and they would tip the sleeping victim into a vat of boiling liquid immediately below, thus killing him. The case of Elizabeth Smart. She was kidnapped, repeatedly graped, psychologically tortured, and then brought around in plain sights in heavy religious garb. She had brushes with people who could have helped her. But her kidnapper claimed she wasn't allowed to speak in public or reveal her face for religious reasons. The reason she was rescued is because her sister was awake during her kidnapping and pretended to be asleep. She knew she recognized a voice, but it took her 9 months to remember as was a guy that used to do yard work for the family. The police didn't believe her because of the elapsed time, but pursued it to appease the family. Shoot, I got a study for finals. Thanks for listening. If I spark joy, hit me with a like and subscribe. I make new videos every day. Till then, check out another video or leave a comment. I love you. Have a great day you amazing powerful person.